Why is it a security risk? Because what you've done is revealed information to a potential hacker. We're upgrading from 11G to 19C. <laughs> Don't flame me. I'm <laughs> still 11G, come on. And one of the trouble spots is we can no longer run alter user identified by values to create impossible passwords. Has this been blocked? So let's uh, have a look at what they mean by impossible passwords. And no, we haven't blocked it, but you shouldn't do it. Let me explain with a demo. So I'm going to connect my database here and create a simple user called demo, identified by demo. Not the most secure, but you get the idea. This is how originally we would tell people if this is, a, a, for example, a schema that owns objects and no one should do, ever directly connect to it because we never want people logging on as the schema that owns objects because they could do drop, truncate, et cetera. That's a bad idea. So normally we would recommend this. We say, go ahead and lock that account, which means when they try to connect, the account is locked, everything's safe. I've done videos about this before. That seems really sensible, but it's actually a security risk. Why is it a security risk? Because what you've done is revealed information to a potential hacker. You've now told them that there is an account called demo on your system. The fact that it says account is locked means you've said, yep, yeah, by the way, we do have a schema called demo. Now you can try and hack into it. They won't be able to connect as demo, but if they manage to connect as someone else, then once again, they go, aha, I know there's an important schema called demo on this database. So the account is locked was a great idea at the time, but it's actually a problem because it opens up the information to security or to hackers. If I go back to version 11 of the database, which is just running on a VM on this machine, we can see how we used to solve this because you couldn't, didn't used to be able to do account locked, or even if you could, you didn't want to. You create a user identified by demo. If you went and looked in DBA users in the password column, back in Oracle 8, you'd see the password in, in encrypted format. In Oracle 11, we improved that. Back in Oracle 10, I think we improved it. You can't see it from DBA users. That's a good thing. But you could see it in sys.user$. dollar. So if you, can, if you had a sysdba access, then you could actually see what the password was. And this was a hash that came out of the password demo. What that meant was, is as long as you could alter a user to be identified by values, something that could never be a hash function, that hash value was a piece of hex. This is obviously an invalid piece of hex, which means... If someone ever tried to guess a password for the demo, they will never hash a password, any password that could ever end up as that because that's not valid hexadecimal. This was good because now if someone tried to hack into your database, they'd get invalid username password. You haven't revealed to them the account is locked because it's not, but they will never ever be able to log on as that account because that's impossible, no pun intended, to have a password that would hash to that value. This is pretty cool. It doesn't reveal information, and it's a an account that can never be logged into. Fast forward to Oracle 21, or Oracle, in fact, Oracle 12 to onwards, but any, any modern version of the database. I try that, and we start getting errors. So this technique that we all used to use back in Oracle 11 and before is no longer valid from 12C onwards. So just to give an idea for how this works, well, the thing of name and password being in sys.user, like we just saw in Oracle 11G, well, we tidied that up as well. That's now gone in Oracle 12 onwards. You can't even see it in the password column. If I describe sys.user$, there's all these other bits and pieces in there. And if you play around long enough, you'll find that it's actually now in spare four. Spare four contains the hashed password. And as you can see, it looks a little bit different to how it used to. We're not gonna to dive too much into this because we don't need to be looking at this level of detail anyway. But in a nutshell, because password hashing algorithms have changed to make them more secure as each version has gone on, you might come from an Oracle 11 database or an Oracle 8 database and move your way up to Oracle 19. So you might have one of the old hashes, maybe an Oracle 10G hash, maybe an 11G hash or a 12 hash, whatever. Depending on what hashes are there, then we might store them in various forms in this password thing. So we're handling the evolution of security in the Oracle database. But for lack of a better term, you can assume this whole thing is just a hash. And obviously that's the new hashed format in 12C onwards. But so you can actually still see it. If I look at the DDL, get DDL, this is the hash that comes out. It shows that a create user command and an alter user command 
are still allowed to do identified by values. You just have to nominate these more complicated hashes now. You can't use the words impossible hash. It actually has to be a valid hash value. Similarly for the demo user, uh, we know that demo is identified by demo and that's its hashed, hashed password there, some big cryptic stuff of hash, of, of hex. So what that means is you still can take advantage of this facility. You just have to have an appropriate hash value. So I can do alter user demo, identified by values, and use this hash, all zeros. No hash will ever evaluate to all zeros. So this is equivalent to the impossible values hash. So you can actually use this alter user demo, demo identified by values, impossible hash in this format, and it'll work fine. But don't do any of that. There's a better way. In Oracle 18 onwards, we solved all this nasty, ridiculous stuff about meaning, meaningless hashes, impossible hashes, and stuff like that. We simply said this, create user demo, no authentication, which simply says there is no hash in there because you can never connect as this user. Also, if the user already exists, I can simply do alter user demo, no authentication. And now I can't connect to it. There is no password you can try because there is no password. So this is the way you should be doing it. Now, one caveat I will say here that's important, and this applies to any mechanism you use to make a, a user unconnectable. If I create a user called demo1, and I added here just to show you that you don't even have to put no authentication. If you just do create user username, then that's a user without any authentication. If that user has create session granted to it, then you can still do a proxy connection. So if I run the following command, you are allowed to get into demo1 schema if you come via Scott, then even though this user has no authentication, then a proxy connection connects Scott with Tiger, that's Scott's password, and end up in demo one, lets me in. It lets me in as demo one. So even though demo one never had a password, never had an authentication system, if demo one can have a session associated with it, then a proxy connection will let it through. So just be aware of that.